In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint ultramarines for your games of Warhammer 40,000. Throughout this tutorial, you're not only going to learn how to paint iconic blue power armor, I'm also going to show you a better way to approach painting your miniatures and how we can paint more than one at a time. And so you can follow along, this is going to be an easy to follow step by step guide showing you all the steps and techniques you'll need so by the end of this tutorial, you all have the confidence and knowledge to get your own ultramarines painted. And if you stick around until the end, I'll show you how we can use transfers to add markings. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael, and I want to show you in this tutorial how to paint some Space Marines using the Ultramarines as an example. All of the paints and brushes I use throughout this tutorial will be shown on the screen as I use them, and they'll also be listed in the description along with any hobby equipment I think you'll find useful, with affiliate links to where you can buy them. And before we get started, I want to say a massive thank you to all the amazing people who've made this tutorial possible with their continued support. It really means a lot. As well, if you enjoy my content here on Tabletop Ready, then let me know by clicking that like button or leaving me a comment. I love reading them and hearing about your own hobby. The Ultramarines are one of the more well-known chapters of Space Marines, so I want to paint some up for this tutorial so I can showcase how to paint Space Marines in general and all you would need to do is change the colours that are used. When it comes to building your Space Marines, we can decide whether we want to fully assemble them or leave parts separate to make it easier to paint them. For these Infernus Marines, all I've done is left the backpack off as these were push fit and it's difficult to separate. I've also undercoated the Space Marines with McCrag Blue because this is going to make painting their blue armour more straightforward. But you can use whatever undercoat spray depending on what chapter you're painting. Something else we might want to do is to have something to hold on to whilst painting. Here I'm using some plastic shot glasses. This is because having a painting handle or attaching the miniature to something to hold on to makes painting more comfortable and prevents us from touching our miniatures too much. If you need even more help getting your miniatures ready for painting, I do have a dedicated video on the channel showing you how. Also throughout this tutorial, because I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your Space Marines painted, I've made it easier to follow along with by splitting the tutorial up into different chapters. And now that we have our Infernus Marines built and undercoated, we're now ready to get started. In this first part of the tutorial, I want to show you how we can approach painting our miniatures. And not only will this help to make painting more enjoyable, but it's also going to help us achieve better results once we're done. The best place to start when painting our miniatures is to get all your base colours painted first. This lets us spend time choosing what colours we want to paint everything and painting becomes less overwhelming as we've created a great starting point to work from. Let's start by painting the armour of our Space Marine using McCrag Blue for the iconic blue armour of the Ultramarines. And so we achieve best results, we always want to make sure to thin your paints and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well, I like to remove excess paint from the brush on some paper towel first, which helps give us more control over how much paint is deposited. When we're ready to start painting, we want to keep our brush moving and avoid going over any area we've already painted, to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. Then once you're done, because we thinned our paint it won't have covered so well, so we'll need to paint another layer using the same process. Painting in multiple thin layers like this means we can get a stronger base colour without losing any details. We just need to make sure each layer has fully dried before applying another one. It's really important that we learn the very basics of applying paint to our miniatures. Not only does this create a great foundation for the other techniques we use later, but it also means we end up with better looking miniatures as well. When you're done with your first base colour, you'll have had some practice. So let's work on getting all the other base colours painted as well. The next areas we're going to be painting are the ribbed areas between the armour and to paint these details let's use some Abaddon Black. And although we want to try and be as neat as possible whilst painting, if you're like me then you're going to be messy and make mistakes. That's okay though because we can always go back and neaten things up as we go along or just wait until we've done all of our other base colours before cleaning up any mistakes. After you're done with those ribbed areas let's use our Abaddon Black to paint any weapon casings. Then the next details to paint are all those belts and pouches and for these we're using Mournfang Brown. Whilst we're getting our base colours painted, we don't have to paint each space marine individually. Instead we can batch paint which involves painting one colour across a unit before moving on to the next colour. This actually speeds things up 
and our units look more uniform and coherent. Then after our belts and pouches, let's paint any purity seals first with Screamer Pink for the wax seal and then more gas bone for the parchment. Honestly, working on getting all of our base colours painted first is a great place to start, especially for new painters and beginners. This is going to help us practice those basics and it's also going to give us experience with our brush. Finally, we want to get all of our base colours painted for all our metallic details and we can start with all the silver areas using iron hand steel. We can then move on to painting all the gold details using Retributor Armour. Then lastly, we want to paint any fuel canisters on their weapons with Rune Lord Brass. We've now gotten all of our base colours painted, making sure we've also tidied up any messy areas and mistakes. And I now want to talk about how we can start creating interest and make our details easier to see creating definition. Even though we have all of our base colours painted on our space marines, they're looking pretty flat. So let's see how we can create definition and interest to bring out all those details and areas to make more of an impact. I first want to show you how we can make our armour more interesting to look at and break up those flatter areas using a glaze. We want to start with some Cantor Blue and to make this a glaze we want to thin it down with twice the amount of water. This is going to make the paint more transparent, allow more of the colours underneath to come through. When using a glaze we want to apply it in even thin layers and work the pigment to where we want the colour to be strongest. We're using this glaze around the lower legs, feet and anywhere else we think would help to break up those flat areas on the armour. We can also build up this colour by glazing with multiple layers, making sure each time the glaze is fully dry before applying it again. And so we achieve a really nice smooth gradient, we can use a glaze of the colour we're working from. Here I'm using a McCrag blue glaze and working it in the opposite direction. We can then continue working on our gradient getting darker with a Night Lord's blue glaze. Remembering we can use a glaze of the colour underneath to get a nicer transition. Glazing has to be one of my most favourite techniques that you'll see a lot of high level miniature painters using because of how powerful it is when it comes to creating smoother blends, tonal variation and interest across our miniatures. But I believe it's a very achievable skill with enough time and practice, even for beginners. Now we want to work on creating definition to bring out all those details and for this I'm going to show you how to recess shade which involves applying our paint or shade directly into recesses and around details. Let's first do this for the armour using Night Lord's Blue, which we still want to thin down like we normally would. Doing a recess shade is a more controlled way of creating definition than an all over wash, so we don't affect any base colours or work we may have already done. Take your time doing this and if you make any mistakes it's okay to neaten up with your McCrag Blue base colour. Now we've learned how to bring out details with a recess shade, we can also do the same using our shades. So let's do this with our belts and pouches using Norn Oil. And when applying a shade we want to use enough to cover an area comfortably so we don't get too much pooling in areas we don't want it to. If you do see this happening then we can remove excess we don't want using our brush. And once the shade is dried you'll see how it's also helped to bring out the details. We can also use Norn Oil for the seal of the purity seal and then to create definition on the parchment we can do recess shade using Bane Blade Brown. There's no one way of creating interest and definition across our miniatures. So it's always worth spending some extra time thinking about the different techniques we can use depending on the kind of details and features we're working with. Let's finish bringing out the rest of our details and our space marines next with some more shades for all those metallic details. For all those silver areas we can use our Norn Oil again. Any gold details we can change using some Reichlin Flesh Shade. And finally the last shade we can use is Seraphim Sapia for any fuel canisters. With those shades now dry, we've now learned how to make things look more interesting and bring out the details so we can see them better, which means it's now time to learn how to highlight everything. I now want to go through the process of highlighting our miniatures, helping to bring out all those edges and details even more. I do want to go into some detail about highlighting and the different kinds of highlights we can do, as it can really make the difference and help elevate our miniatures. The idea behind highlighting is to bring out any edges, areas and raised details to draw our attention to them and to make these features stand out more. The most prominent way of highlighting and the one we most associate with it is the line highlight and it's this highlight that we're going to be focusing on. 
For this technique, it's a great idea to have a brush you vibe with that you like to use and I would keep it separate so it's always up for the task when needed. Again, we want to thin our paint, remove any excess on some paper towel first, which is going to prevent creating those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we're going to do is called a chunky highlight and for this we use an Altdorf Guard Blue. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges as well as on any raised details and areas. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line so we can still see it once we've painted our finer highlights after this. And once you're finished you should see how it's helped to bring out the shape and details of the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight. I'm using Calgar Blue and this is used on any edges and to continue bringing out any details. To make this easier we can angle our brush against an edge and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights to be. For me highlighting has to be one of the most important techniques to really practice and get good at because not only would it help to improve the look of our miniatures but it also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination making us better miniature painters overall. Let's continue highlighting with a fine highlight using Femrisian Grey. This highlight is used to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent and eye catching. The last highlight we can do is a spot highlight, using Blue Horror to paint little dots in all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. And once you're done painting all your highlights you'll be able to see what a difference it's made to our miniature. Now that we've learned about highlighting and the different highlights we can do, Let's work on our weapon casings and rib details. For these areas, let's first do our chunky highlights using Corvus Black. Next, we can use Dawnstone for our edge highlights, and for the ribbed areas, this means painting a line on those raised ridges. We can then finish any weapon casings with a spot highlight using Administratum Grey. It's important to remember that we might not be very good at something when we're first starting out, and it takes time and practice to learn new skills. We all have to start somewhere, and for me the most important thing to do is to enjoy what we're doing. We're now going to get our belts and pouches finished, but first we want to brighten things back up with our Monfang Brown, but making sure we don't lose any definition created with our shade. And once you've done that, we can go straight to an edge highlight using XV88. Let's now highlight the wax part of the purity seals with Emperor's Children, and the parchment with Screaming Skull. Then the last details to highlight are the metals, first using Stomho Silver for any silver details. We can then finish these gold details doing a highlight using Canoptech Alloy. And before we move on to the final section, something we can do to add interest is to paint little scuffs and scratches on our power armour, which is going to really impress people who sees it. As well, make sure to paint all those rivets with Stomho Silver. It's a small thing, but it really does make a difference. We've learnt a lot about painting our space marines, but there's still some things left to paint, so let's finish up in the last section of this tutorial. In this final section, I want to show you how to finish their weapons, as well as how we can use transfers to denote what chapter our space marines belong to. I know what I've been showing you throughout this tutorial may seem a lot, and you'd be right, but I really want to show you what's possible, and you can do as much or as little as you feel comfortable doing. Just have fun. Let's start by finishing the purity seals adding text painting little squiggly lines using Rhinox Hide. When you've done that we can work on finishing those flamer nozzles next and see how we can make them look a little more interesting. The first thing we're going to do is to lighten up the centre of the nozzle with some Canoptec Alloy. Then finish the flamer nozzles with an edge highlight using Stormho Silver. After this we can apply some Drooky Violet at the front to create an effect where the metal has been heated up. We can build this up if we need to, just let it fully dry first before applying it again. The next thing I want to show you is how to apply transfers to our Space Marines to add markings and to show which chapters they belong to. The transfers will be in the same box as your miniatures or bought separately in an upgrade kit and you can see they will have all the unit markings and symbols you could ever want. These transfers are applied to an area after using water to release them from the backing sheet. And once in place, let the transfer completely dry, and to make it look even better, we can use some microset, which thins our transfers and sets them in place. Once that's done its thing, we can flatten our transfers and clean the area with a cotton bud. 
Finally, we can thin down some Storm Shield varnish with an equal amount of water to protect the area and knock back that shininess. The last thing to do on our Space Marines is to paint any lenses in the helmets. To do this, let's start by painting them using Mephiston Red. We then want to paint a thin line along the bottom of each lens using Fire Dragon Bright. And then we can finish each lens painting a dot of white scar in the top rear corner. For this tutorial, I really wanted to show you how to approach painting Space Marines in general, regardless of what colour you want to paint them. And even if you're not painting Ultramarines, hopefully you've learnt something useful. So let's see how they turned out. But before we see the reveal, I do want to take a moment to thank Summers Gaming, Frank M, Chris Parks, Raphael Otal, Matthew Hurriot, Mark Dockery and Nasser Luta who have all recently become supporters for the channel. Thank you so much. And if you enjoy the content here on Tabletop Ready and want to help support the channel as well, you can become a channel member or join my Patreon which not only helps me create this content, it also gives you access to our Discord along with access to lots of other perks for as little as £2 a month. And for every tier you'll also get tutorials early and be kept up to date with what I'm up to behind the scenes. Our Space Marines are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to get your own painted. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel including some of the other chapters in Space Marine units so make sure to go and check those out as well. I really do enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. If you do then please leave a like and let me know in the comments below. As well make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.